In my last top 5 video, I showed you a compilation of different lures to watch out for. In this video, I'm going to show you even more lures to keep an eye out for. Again, I'd like to note that the lures you see in this video are to educate you on the types of lures that exist. Just because you see a lure in this video does not mean that is how the lure will go down for you. Lures use multiple variants of lures to bait and confuse their victims. If you come across a lure, just walk away. It's not worth the risk. Fight Arena Lure The Fight Arena Lure is actually a pretty elaborate lure for such a simple drop your items type lure. In order to gain access to the Fight Arena, you'll need to have Khazard armor. You'll also need to get past a guard. However, that guard has been lured away by another player who is part of the lure. Generally, the second player will splash this guard to prevent them from dying and respawning by the door. This guard, who is normally by the door, prevents you from going through the door. When he's baited away, you and the lure can freely enter and exit the room. Because you can freely enter and exit the room, the player getting lured does not see any danger with dropping their items and leaving the room. The way the lure goes down is the lure brings you into this long room at the fight arena. Since the guard is gone, you can easily enter. You may even be encouraged to enter and exit to build your confidence. Next, the lure starts and you drop your items inside the room. The lure asks you to trade again outside the room. When they see your inventory has 28 open spaces, they now have confirmation that your items are on the ground. They have the second player in the lure bring the guard back near the door. Since the guard is nearby, you are no longer able to gain access to the room. A third player part of the lure, who is in the room but out of sight, now runs to the spot you dropped your items and waits for them to spawn. Hopping roll does not help, either as there is a guard in place. You might be able to kill the guard in time to enter the room and hop back, but the chances of that are pretty low. In full disclosure on this lure, I'm not even 100% sure if this is actually how the lure is done. I've watched a few videos to see how it's done, but was unable to find an explanation video. Moral of the story, don't drop your items. Hop to a Bounty Hunter world. With the release of the most recent Bounty Hunter update, a new lure came into the game. In Bounty Hunter worlds, when a player enters the wilderness, they automatically get a skull, no matter what. Previously, to get a skull, you needed to attack another player. This is no longer the case for Bounty Hunter worlds. So the lure that occurs here is that a player brings you to the wilderness on a non-Bounty Hunter world. The method varies depending on the lure, but you are brought to the wilderness. To keep you from feeling like you're about to get lured, the lure tells you to bring just three items and to make sure your attack player options are turned off. Lures hope you do not know about the Bounty Hunter Skull update and convince you to hop to a Bounty Hunter world to continue the game or whatever the bait is. Not knowing about the update, the player hops to a Bounty Hunter world, immediately gets a Skull, and is PK'd. The Animation Stall, also known as the Book Stall. This lure takes place on PvP worlds. It's an animation stall that's commonly referred to as the Book Stall lure. It got the name Bookstall because most of the time the lure pulls out a book and stands in place. How the lure happens is the lure trades a player. The lure then clicks to go to a non-safe area of the map. While doing that, they start to enchant bolts or an emote or anything that will stall their character from moving on screen. Enchanting bolts starts an animation for the character and keeps them in place until the animation is over. The player does not move on screen, but they are still moving according to the game engine. When the animation is complete, the player runs to the actual location the game has registered them at. What this means is that the lure stays in place when in fact they are actually in the PvP area according to the game engine. The animation shows the player in a safe zone, but they are actually not. Once the animation is complete, the lure's character will quickly run to the actual location they had clicked. If you accept the trade of the lure, you will run to where the game has them registered to be at, and not where they are located in their stall. This will be in a non-safe zone, where you'll then be attacked by one of their teammates. Hop Worlds to PvP Bank Overlay Lure There is a lure that involves photoshopping images to trick players. The lure generally gets their victims into a Discord chat and tries to become friends with them. The lure chats with the victim and sometimes even does small anti-lures with them. This is all to gain their trust. Next, they bring their victim to an area of the game that is a PvP area on a PvP world. 
as the victim is still on a normal world, nothing is wrong. But next, the lure asks the victim to hop worlds to a PvP world. Reasons why vary lure to lure, but the lure involves being on a PvP world. The lure then sends an altered image to the victim in Discord to show them the area is in a safe zone, when in fact it's not. The victim believes the photo, hops worlds, and is BK'd. It's a simple lure, but players fall for it. Another overlay lure involves messages from other players, generally JMods, because they are seen as trustworthy. The JMod messages are bait to convince the victim something is true when in fact it is not. The JMods in the images did not actually send those messages, they have been photoshopped. I hate to say it, but don't trust an image someone sends you when asking to hop worlds to a PvP area. Unless you know yourself, don't believe a single image. Do a little research first. Bring an alt in, or hop to the world with no items on your inventory. It's better to rebank than to rebuild. Hill Giants. This lure is an old one. It involves a small building that brings you to the Hill Giants in the Edgeville dungeon. The lure is going to trade you a bunch of items, one of those items being the Brass Key. They trade random items to throw you off that the Brass Key is a requirement to enter this building. Alternatively, they bring you through the dungeon from Edgeville. Regardless, the lure gets you into this building and has you drop your items. The lure exits the building and asks you to trade them. If you still have the key, they'll ask for it back. If you dropped it, then it's already too late. To gain access to this building, you will need a brass key, and the time it takes you to purchase another one, or run to the bank, or run through the dungeon from Edgeville will take over a minute, which means the lure has plenty of time to pick up your items. Instance Lure Here's a pretty straightforward lure. First things first, never drop your items, especially if you're in an instance. Hosts of instance can remove any player at any time from their instance. If you drop your items in an instance and get kicked out, then there is no way you can get back into that instance and the items you dropped on the ground are now the property of the lure. Again, don't drop your items. And especially do not drop an item you are not ready to lose in an instance. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching, and I also hope you learned about a new lure that you were not aware of. The more lures you know about, the less likely you are to fall for them. And again, just because you saw a lure in this video does not mean that is how the lure is going to work if attempted on you. Lures use multiple variants of lures to trick and confuse their victims. If you find yourself in a lure, it's best to just hop worlds, log off, or walk away. Don't bait yourself into the lures because the lure is more likely to bait you than you are to anti-lure them. Again, I hope you found this video both educational and entertaining. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you all in my next video.